multiple earthquakes hit overnight near Mount St. Helens. Nearly 200 earthquakes were recorded in Yellowstone National Park. Just Yellowstone wakes up after Mount St. Helens earthquake. Land rises at an alarming rate. In SMUS, August 19, 2025, in a surprising chain of geological events, the ground beneath Yellowstone National Park has begun to rise just days. After a swarm of earthquakes rattled Mount St. Helens in Washington state, the sudden uplift, which has already raised parts of the park floor by as much as one centimeter, has alarmed many observers and triggered a wave of speculation about whether the dormant Yellowstone supervolcano may have been affected by its Pacific Northwest neighbor. A seismic surprise. Late last week, a series of over 200 minor earthquakes struck near the crater of Mount St. Helens. Although most were small between magnitude 0.5 and 1.8, they were closely clustered and occurred within a short period of time. As one of America's most carefully monitored volcanoes, the quakes were immediately recorded by the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, which classified them as part of a normal magma recharge cycle often seen after a long quiet phase. However, just 48 hours later, GPS stations within Yellowstone National Park began to detect an unexpected uplift. A network of high-precision satellite instruments placed across the park's caldera recorded a steady rise of the land surface beginning in the early hours of August 17th. By August 19th, the uplift measured approximately 10 millimeters. Surprising, geophysicists. This was not anticipated, said Dr. Elaine Prescott, senior volcanologist at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. We normally attribute late summer uplift to snowmelt and hydrothermal fluid movement, but the timing immediately following the eruption tremors in Washington caught our attention. Are the two volcanoes connected? The idea that Mount St. Helens could influence Yellowstone has long been dismissed as implausible by scientists, given the distance of almost 700 miles between the two systems. One is fueled by a subduction zone where the Pacific Plate dives beneath North America, while the other sits above a deep mantle plume. In short, they are two very different beasts. Still, the close timing of the two events has fueled speculation and sparked interest among both scientists and the general public. On social media, people are saying one volcano wakes up another like dominoes, Dr. Prescott noted. The truth is that intervolcano triggering across such large distances is extremely rare and there is currently no evidence that Mount St. Helens has any influence on Yellowstone. What the data really shows, despite the sensational headlines, the USGS reports that the observed uplift at Yellowstone is consistent with normal breathing of the caldera. This seasonal pulse is caused by the expansion of hydrothermal fluids deep under the park, which swell in volume as temperatures rise and snowmelt recharges underground reservoirs. Between 2004 and 2006, for comparison, Yellowstone's Mallard. Lake Dome and Sour Creek Dome rose at rates of 15 to 20 millimeters per year showing far more dramatic uplift yet, no eruption took place. The current 10 mm rise over two months remains well within the historical norm.
This kind of inflation is something we've tracked for decades, explained Dr. Kyle Anderson, a geodynamic specialist with the USGS. We're not seeing any corresponding spike in gas emissions, no increase in ground temperatures, and no abnormal changes in geyser activity, all things we would expect to accompany a magma-driven deformation event. Public reaction and precautions. That scientific nuance, however, has not stopped concerns from spreading. Over the weekend, visitor traffic to Yellowstone dropped by nearly 12%, and online forums dedicated to disaster preparedness lit up with anxious posts about a cascading volcanic chain reaction across the western United States. National Park Service issued a public statement on Sunday, reassuring the public that the park remains at normal volcanic alert level and that there is no increased risk to visitors. Park Superintendent John Piper added, We understand people are concerned, but at this point, everything we're seeing falls firmly within Yellowstone's typical seasonal behavior. What happens next? Scientists will continue to watch the park closely. More than 50 seismometers, 15 GPS stations, and multiple gas monitoring platforms remain active around the clock. If the uplift accelerates, or if new earthquake swarms begin to appear around the caldera's edge, the alert level could be adjusted. For now, however, experts emphasize that Yellowstone's uplift is more a reminder of the park's dynamic nature than a sign of impending disaster. People often forget that Yellowstone is alive, said Dr. Prescott. It breathes. It shifts, it changes shape. That does not necessarily mean it's getting ready to erupt. It means it's doing what large volcanic systems do. Key takeaways. Observation intertrade St. Helens had a swarm of small quakes, normal recharge behavior. Not connected to Yellowstone alone's caldera uplifted approximately one centimeter since mid-May within range of typical seasonal hydrothermal. Uplift no increase in gas emissions or ground temperature in Yellowstone suggests uplift is not related to rising magma volcanic alert level remains at normal. Greeno significant increase in eruption risk. Wilt.